Hey there, John with Crows Craft. In today's budget D&D build, I'm going to be making a Draco Lich. I'm going to be using this bat skeleton from the dollar store. And more importantly, I'm going to be using this T-Rex skeleton that I got at a thrift store for the base. Uh, as you can see, it's got quite a bit of dirt kind of caked up in it. Probably why it was only 75 cents. Uh, it's not a complete model or anything, so I'm going to be kind of piecemealing this together with that skeleton and probably a few other Halloween skeletons I got from the dollar store. So still will be a budget build. I'm not going to be using anything too fancy. So let's get started. All right, so starting off, we're gonna be doing the skull, and I'm gonna add some horns to this to make it look a little less dinosaur-like. So I'm gonna give it some kind of like black dragon horns and have them hook towards the mouth. So I'm gonna roll them out with this oven-baked clay, and once I got a good shape, I'm gonna stick it onto the side, and once it fits decently, I'll take them off, put them in the oven, bake them, and glue them on. All right, now while that's in the oven, I'm gonna do some more modifications to the skull, just making the eyes look a little bit bigger. That way it looks a little more like a dragon and less like a T-Rex. Then I'm gonna pick out the rest of the bones. I'm gonna be using arms from a dollar store rat skeleton. Then I'll use the wings from the dollar store bat. And I'll be using the back legs from a dollar store bird. The rest of it is all gonna be from the T-Rex skeleton. And here I'm sharpening and shortening the toes on the bird legs, just to make it look a little bit more like dragon feet. All right, now I'm gonna be using this heat gun to shape the tail and the wings a little bit. So I want the tail to kind of look like it wraps around a little bit just to give it a little bit more life, even though it's an undead dragon. Um, but yeah, I think it's just important to make the model look a little less rigid. So I'll put a little curve to the tail and I'm gonna spread out the wings a little bit too using the heat gun. Now that I got everything shaped to the way that I want, I'm going to be using a hot glue gun to glue everything together initially. It's not going to be the only thing holding it together just because hot glue has some give to it and it's a little like flimsy. I want to coat it with a little bit of super glue afterwards to make sure that the joints stay together. And now that we have a body, I need a base to put it on. So I'm gonna be using this white foam from the dollar store. It's the foam sheeting that you can get and it has paper on the outside, but that paper will just peel right off. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this and just make a base. So get the general shape and I'll cut it on a kind of angle just to kind of give it a little bit of a cliff look. making good use of the hot glue gun again and just gonna glue them down.
And like I said, I'm just covering the joints in super glue to give it a little more stability and to kind of harden it a little bit. So now that I have a good base, I want to add some ruin to the bottom to kind of spice it up a little bit. So I'm going to use some of this blue insulation foam. You can buy it most hardware stores, Home Depot, really anywhere that sells any sort of building material. And I'm going to cut out a good just little chunk of it to make a pillar. And I'm going to put some ruin around it as well, like some bricks and fallen stone just to give the base a bit more flavor than just a flat piece of stone. All right, now that I got the pillar, I want to add some texture. So I'm gonna make a homemade texture roller to give it a stone finish with this aluminum foil. So you just kind of ball it up or roll it into like the shape of some sort of like rolling pin and just roll it all over all of the foam. And once you're done, it'll kind of just give it a rough stony surface. Now here I am using the side of a nail file, one of these ones that you can get at the dollar store uh, I use it a lot and what I'm doing is I'm using the side of it as kind of a saw to just make it look like the stone pillar has a few different sections of stone blocks. Alright, now that everything's glued down, I'm going to hit all of the foam and the connections at the bottom where I had glued the model down to the foam with some black paint and Mod Podge mix. What this does is it protects the foam and also gives it another level of security of staying together because you know Mod Podge is basically a glue. So I'm going to coat all of the foam in this so it gets protected for when I use spray paint on it and it won't melt the foam immediately. All right, so looking good so far. As you can see, the bottoms of the feet is the only spot that I really hit it with the black paint and Mod Podge, and obviously all the foam. So now I'm gonna move on to spray painting. So I'm just gonna use a plain old white spray paint cause I'm probably just gonna use this as the base coat for the skeleton as well, just to save a little bit of time. All right, now it's really looking like a Draco Lich. Also forgot to say, I used just regular plastic beads for the eyes. I just realized I didn't say anything about those earlier. Now I'm gonna be mixing some blue and gray paint to make a slate gray kind of color, and I'm gonna coat the entire base in that, just to give it a nice cave floor look. Now I'm painting all of the horns and teeth with this kind of cream yellow. So continuing with my base coat, I consider a wash a base coat as well. Um, it's all kind of part of the same process. So I'm gonna hit everything with a black wash except for the horns and the teeth. Those are gonna stay the yellowish color. 
dry brushing is also part of my base coat. So I'm gonna dry brush everything that I had put the black wash on uh, with a white dry brushing. So this will make it pop and kind of show me where I need to do my highlights later on. So here I'm just adding a sepia wash to the horns and teeth and then I'm just going to kind of speed through and do all the highlighting with the white on the dragon and do some gray highlighting on the base. And here's the handsome fella. Uh, this guy was a blast to paint. I had a really fun time making him. Anything that I get to chop up this much and kind of Frankenstein together, I'm all about. And I think he came out pretty cool. I did bounce around doing the dragon bone golem thing that they released in Fizzbands, uh, but I ultimately just decided to do the classic Draco Lich. I did get kind of lucky finding the T-Rex skeleton, but I've seen other people Frankenstein a bunch of skeletons together to make one of these, and they look awesome. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me. I had a blast building this guy, and I think he came out pretty decent. Let's give you one last look. Look at that handsome boy. So, if you're familiar with my TikTok, I do a lot of dollar store D&D builds, but I do a lot of like smaller snippet videos. So I'm moving over here for longer tutorial videos. Still gonna do the TikTok thing, but I definitely wanna have a more like helpful and guiding video platform. And I figured YouTube is the place to do that. So if you wanna see more like this guy, subscribe, follow me, whatever. Um, you can also check out my TikTok, which is still Crow's Nest Craft, same handle, the whole nine yards. And um, yeah, if you wanna see more, hang out. I'll definitely be pushing out more.